<laughs> hey, everybody, and welcome back to For the Booze. For the Booze. For the Booze. For the Booze. <laughs> Hi, we're back. For part two. Yes. Of the Black Eyed Kids. I don't <laughs> think I'm ready for this. There's a lot of creepy stories about this topic out there in the world. Um, stories I've never heard before, honestly. Uh, they, If you go on Reddit, there's a treasure trove. Oh, of, I'm sure. Reddit is full of those things. But there was a few other websites I was able to find, like jhmoncrief.com, CVL. T Nation, which I think is supposed to be like Cold Nation. Hmm. Not a not a website I visit, but it seems pretty popular <laughs> though. And there's a lot of creepy stuff on there. So uh finding stories for this really wasn't that hard. And honestly, if you guys went out there to look for them, it probably wouldn't be that hard for you either. Hmm. But this episode is gonna be kind of like a it's gonna be kind of like a little peek inside the curtain of uh what's what we're gonna be doing on Patreon. Patreon. Yeah, this is like the pre- Behind the Booze Patreon podcast. So, if you like what we do here today, and you want to want to hear more, see more, and kind of check us out over there, then yeah, then yeah, then check us out over there. <laughs> <laughs> the only difference is, is you know, here on on the main podcast, we we tend to tone it back a bit. Yes, and uh, you know, just just disclaimer. That if you're going to listen to what's being put out on Patreon, it's going to be a, a bit more adult. Yes, we try to keep the podcast PG so you can listen with kids and, you know, yeah, so you enjoy just, it with your family or whatever you want to do. So we don't have to worry about who hears it when you're listening to it. Right. Unless you don't mind them thinking you're a freak because you like paranormal stuff. I mean, we're all pretty used to that. Yeah, we're all kind of freaks. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I thought this would be a good way to kind of introduce everybody to what we would be good doing over there. You know, again, though, I'm just excited. minus the adult language. Yeah, I'm excited for this. Well, I mean, not really about the Black Eyed Children, <laughs> but, you know. But we've got some, some pretty good stories here. Um, they're all over the place, honestly. I had to sift through them because there's a lot of people who get two different things confused and it's black eyed children. And a lot of people kind of mix in these stories of black eyed people, which is a different phenomena where people kind of tend to get taken over by something and Mm -hmm. their eyes turn black and they become not themselves. Oh, like they themselves. So they don't have, well, not necessarily like I remember. Yeah. Kind of. Yes. One of the stories I read was a girl who grew up in the church and her mother was like a very devout Christian. And then one day she just became not herself and her eyes turned black. Huh. And I didn't really read much after that just because it wasn't really on topic for what I was looking for. Right. But there seems to be, when you look it up online, there's kind of like this confusion between the two. So hmm. I, I, I think I might have added one in here because it was so creepy, though. And... I think that there might actually be a parallel between the two. Oh, okay. So I'll tell you what that is at the end. I've I've had a you know a few days to think about it, but let's let's get into this. This isn't going to be our normal, you know. Um, we just wanted to read stories that people have had interactions with the black eyed kids and talk about it because they're creepy. Yeah, they're that very, they're they very are. And the first story that I'm going to read to you is called. The school bus. The school bus. I said, I used to drive a school bus, and all of my kids were pretty good, especially when by themselves. But there were these two boys at the back of the bus who would act up and do things that got them in trouble. I began noticing in my mirror, right before they acted out, they would appear as black-eyed children. I don't think that it was the kids themselves, but rather a form of temporary possession. They looked like ghouls. Mm -hmm. Their eye sockets looked empty, and they both had a wider than normal devious smile. Their skin was pretty pasty white. It was freaky. I began stopping the bus and squashing their plans before they could act out. After a while, it all stopped. Wow. I mean... That's... That's... Oh, sorry. Sorry. I had to adjust my chair. Uh, 
I, I, t- I tend to not think that like premonitions, I guess, I mean, you know, like immediately before people have or see, say, or say, or do something are like that high up on my believability list. But mm-hmm. I don't know. That's, I don't know if it's really a premonition. Well, he, you know what I mean? Like he saw. They were just badass kids. But he saw the way they looked and they, they were different before those things happened. I think I think this story is one of those parallels between, you know, the black eyed people thing and black eyed children mm. where it's not necessarily a black eyed children story where they come to your house and demand help. But more so it is like a something temporarily takes over who they are and makes them act differently. Right. Almost like a possession, I guess. Almost like they've become possessed. That's so weird. And honestly, it's kind of creepier. Yeah. Don't like that. Absolutely. Right? I would never drive a bus again. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Quit I, my job I forever. only like kids because I have kids. I don't want to work with kids in the first place, and I definitely <laughs> don't want to work with little devil kids. <laughs> no. So the first time I see that, I'm out 401k, Deuces. I'm not doing this anymore. Uh, That's scary. Little creepy, possessed, black-eyed children in babies. the mirror of your bus behind you. Little devil babies. Look, I grew up in the 80s. I saw the scene in Nightmare on Elm Street with the bus. I'm all set. Okay? <laughs> I was warned. It's, you know, it's kind of like how you don't drive behind a logging truck now. Oh, yeah. Because you've seen Final Destination. Final Destination, right? man. We aren't the generation of stupid people. Absolutely not. No, so thank you. I'm just saying. If I seen mm-hmm. that, I'm never driving a bus again. These kids can walk to school. Speaking of that, it reminded me. I don't know if your sister listens to this show, but I, I remember don't think so. her and I were going <laughs> were going somewhere. I was driving and we got like uh we were stuck on a like a one lane road, like one lane one way, one lane the other way. And we got stuck behind this, like, logging truck. And black-eyed kids came out of the woods at you? Absolutely not. But it, like, pulled out in front of us. And I, like, slowed way down. (laughs) And her and I both looked at each other the exact same time. And I looked over in the oncoming lane, and there was no one coming. And I gunned it and passed that truck. There's no way I'm driving behind that thing. Because the last thing you want to be, the last thing that goes through your head, is a log. Oh, man. You get it? Do you get it? Yeah. All right, cool. (laughs) All right. Well, do you want to read the next one? Sure. Okay. Go for it. Go for it. Read the story. Read the creepy story. I'm I'm doing it. This is a good one. This is it's a short it's another short one, but it's it's a pretty good one. This one's called The Gas Station. I heard a story of a gas station employee in Mexico that was working overnight one night, and he saw a kid pale with black eyes asking him for help but for some reason he didn't step out of the employee room that was until a truck driver approached and started honking so much and the kid ran off into the wilderness then the employee went outside towards the truck and the truck driver told him that those aren't kids but some sort of demon and he should never let them in or go out to where they are but i don't know how truthful that is so it's just a short one where some guy was working overnight at a gas station and a bunch of or a couple of black-eyed kids came up and did what black-eyed kids do and demanded help Ugh! so it's like staring in the window from outside and he's like "Uh." yeah but you know they're like asking him for help which is on brand for what black right. eyed children do that's that's their thing absolutely and apparently the truck driver knew what this was he's heard of it before because he knew not to go outside and i wonder how many people like this is in new mexico i wonder if they associate them with skinwalkers out there hmm. which i found out is something that's you're not supposed to say living in this area because we don't live far from there and apparently mm-hmm. if we talk about it they'll visit us but i'm pretty sure this isn't the first time i've mentioned it and I haven't had any visits yet. Nope. I mean, we did an entire episode on it, and we I've didn't never do an seen ep- anything. We haven't, whoa, whoa, whoa. We haven't done an episode on skinwalkers. Didn't we put that in part of our Utah well, thing? We've talked about them, but we haven't done an episode on them. We talked about them in the Route 666, and I think maybe the Tuella one. Oh, okay. 
Well, we haven't done an episode because I remember saying uh, a while back that I wouldn't do an episode on them because I don't really believe in it. And I know a lot of people don't. That's fair. The next story is this still sends shivers down my spine. As I was the store manager of a nationwide mall computer gaming store. This is a good story. This was long before GameStop and cell phones. So this dude's like old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we were located on the left side facing the middle of the mall with JC Penney's to the left at the to the left at the end. Now this detail plays into what happened. My ex-wife is a strikingly beautiful Latina woman. Good for him. Preach on, brother, I guess. I don't, I don't know why that's important. She was only 20, and my daughter, one and a half at the time. Unfortunately, or fortunately for us, we had very beautiful babies, and they almost looked like dolls. The reason I say this is my daughter attracted way too much attention as a baby. We stopped going out in public because people were constantly approaching us and trying to touch her. Which, that's a thing. Hmm. That's a thing, because our oldest, do you remember when he was little and people used to start touching him? Yeah, did all not, the time. Did not like that. All the time. After he got past his Bender, Benjamin Button stage. Yeah. <laughs> the old man. <laughs> now, it's a Sunday, and I would work the whole day since it was a short day. The three of us would go to work. My ex-wife would dress our daughter and herself up, and she'd make a day of it. She liked to shop and wander for the day, coming back to have lunch. Being the manager, I took long breaks as well. Now, everything is going along fine like any other Sunday. I go out to give her some money, and my spidey senses start going crazy. I look to the left, and I see a man intently looking at my wife and her daughter. I meet his gaze, but he doesn't look away. Now, we had a huge wedding with 200 plus guests, and I asked my wife if she knew the person staring at her. We both looked up and he was just gone. Couldn't have been two, three seconds since I last looked at him. But there was something strange about him. I remember to this day. He was dressed in a dark gray suit with a dark gray overcoat. Now, not to trouble her. I told her not to worry about it. We had lunch and we took the long way back to the store. We stopped by mall security. I introduced her to the security guys who I'd become good buddies with. Now, I pulled them aside and told them what had happened. And they were concerned, but we stop by the info booth and I tell the person working there to let me know if she sees him. My ex-wife, you know, if she's so hot and everything, why is it his ex-wife? Right. I never put that together until now. Couldn't hold it down. Couldn't hold it down. Maybe she was too spicy for him. (laughs) Call me, girl. (laughs) Excuse me. (laughs) Now, my ex-wife loved to shop at J.C. Penney's and go shopping in the store. Now, before she goes in, I tell her about the man in the gray suit. She let me know that she'll keep an eye out for him. Now, there's a call on the store phone. An employee tells me it's the phone, and I'm like, yeah, I heard it ring, lol. He tells me he needs some help. He pulls me aside and says, it's your wife, and she sounds scared as hell. I jump on the phone. She tells me that the man that I had described has been following her for over half an hour. When we had first showed up, she said he was reaching for our daughter. Oh. I immediately call security. They come up the middle with the employees standing watch to the entrance of J.C. Penney's. I go out back into the parking garage, which was no more than 50 feet away. Only two entrances into the store, front and back. Lots of emergency exits on the parking garage side. So, the only entrance not covered was in the front. Luck would have it, a police officer had pulled someone over from the street and was in front in the front parking lot. Now, by this point, now I, I, don't, I don't want the gentleman to get away. I want him caught. Everyone starts converging on the store. He's got nowhere to go, right? They walk to the station where my wife is surrounded by the store manager, several employees, and they have our daughter behind the counter. The police officer had been alerted. Mall security escorts both of them out of the store to me. We put them in our car, and they drive straight to her mother's. They continue to search the store, every nook and cranny. He was never found. To this day, I can remember every detail, but the detail that sticks with me the most his eyes were coal black. Oh, that 
Mm -mm. He like watched you from afar first and then waited for you to separate. But did he? Was he an actual person? Uh, Probably not. I'm just saying. But that thing was watching you beforehand and then waited for you to separate and then was like, okay, I'll go after her. And and like I worked in the mall when I was younger Mm -hmm. and like it's... It stands out to me that he says he notices this person, right? Because, like, when you're in the mall every day, people become a blur. Mm -hmm. Like, you're just so used to seeing people come and go, come and go, come and go. You don't really notice anybody unless you're a 19-year-old guy and you're like, oh, look at that girl. But, like, you don't notice people because you're just – it's all day. Mm -hmm. So the fact that, like, he can remember – I'm assuming this is probably early 80s, maybe late 70s, and he remembers it now, that, that says a lot to me. It does. Absolutely. Because I don't remember anybody from the mall. (laughs) Nobody. (laughs) Not even me. So, Uh, and then, you know, they all converge on the store and there's nowhere to go, but he's never found. So where did he go? He just vanished. Yeah, but he did the first time too, right? So. Yeah. I don't Uh -uh. don't know. And this is another one of those kind of parallel stories where I, obviously this isn't necessarily a black eyed kid because there's no kid in the story. Mm Mm-hmm. Except but, for the baby doll child. But it's another black eyed being, if you will. And if you remember from last week, we had talked in, you know, in the story, we talked about um, the lady said that we don't really know what they are. Right. And, and it, it doesn't necessarily have to be kids because there's a lot of parallels between black eyed children and shadow people. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's, it is something masquerading as something else. And we just don't understand it. Mm. I, I don't know. It's it's very interesting to me, um, and it's very creepy, and that's a very creepy story. I I feel like I want to understand it, but I don't want to encounter I don't wanna, it. I don't want to understand it. Like, like forget mm, that. No, thank you. <laughs> Keep your black eyes out out my business. <laughs> but uh, go ahead and read read the next one. This is another really good one. Actually, you know, I I when I was. When I was reading this the first time when I found it, Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure... Oh, okay, no, this isn't the one. Okay, I I was trying to put two scenarios together where you had lived in Texas, and it's a it ends up being a story about a military guy, but it comes later. Okay. But this is also a very good story. A lot of these are very good stories. I I read all of them, and this one is also pretty creepy. Oh, all right. There was something in that house. Not my story, but my dad's. He grew up with a single mom and four other siblings in southeast Texas, on the border of Louisiana, in the bad part of town. Oh boy. The house this happened in was behind a nightclub. He was born in 1967 and says this happened when he was two, and he remembers it to this day. He says him and his brother, who was maybe six at the time, were sleeping on the couch in their living room, and they both woke up to a black-eyed child standing in the doorway of their closet. He said the child looked older than them by a little, had black eyes and orange hair, and had a slight glow to him, like he was under his own spotlight. He said him and his brother tried to scream but nothing would come out. The child just disappeared after that. The reason everyone knows this is true? A couple of months ago, me, my mom, and my dad were at my grandma's house, and my uncle was watching a documentary on black-eyed children when my dad brought up what happened to them all those years ago. And my uncle started tearing up and just kept repeating, Man, you seen that too? I thought it was crazy. I can't believe you seen him too. My uncle has a history of drug usage and mental health problems. And all these years, for over 50 years, he assumed what he had seen was fake and just his mind playing tricks on him. It's sad because we think that this situation shook him up so badly as a kid He started using drugs as a teen to cope with the thought that he may have been crazy. They were so scared 
They just never brought it up ever again after that. But my dad always told my mom that story ever since they started dating. My grandma, who was sitting there, listening to them talk about what happened, just said, oh, there was something in that house, Lord. I'm going to try to get her to tell me about her experiences in that house. So apparently there's a bunch of experiences that happened in this house in the, the bad part of Louisiana. But I don't know. As somebody who did drugs, uh, I don't think that really, uh, I mean, may, maybe it pushed them a little bit. I mean, maybe. I mean, I think people are kind of pre-programmed whether they can or can't do it. A lot of people experiment and things like that, but I I think it may have messed them up. I mean, I don't... Like a lot. They kept it to themselves. They didn't even talk about it. I don't doubt that it freaked them out, but I don't know. I mean, I was young when I saw my first things, you know? But this is in the... Yeah, but did you take drugs to cope with it? Uh, no, I did that just for fun. Exactly. Now, <laughs> it's I been mean, a long time. This is in, he said, his, this would have been, all right, it was in 67. And he was like two. two. So it would have been 69. Right. Is this the, is this the first account? Is this the first claimed account of a black eyed child? Ooh, that's a good question. That's pretty far back. Yeah. Even the la the last episode we did, it didn't start until like the eighties. Right. Interesting, but creepy, creep, very creepy. Like just being a kid, and all of a sudden, some spooky other child just appears in your bedroom with like its own in your spotlight, closet. in your closet, at you. in your freaking closet. Man. Absolutely not under the bed and in the closet. As children, no. I mean, the those are just no places. The you closet know, closet monster stories are scary enough. I mean, I still can't sleep with my foot hanging off the side I of the bed. I used to be like that, but I don't know if you've noticed lately. You do. I, I sleep with both my feet out I can't. Now. I absolutely cannot do it. You're too hot, man. Okay, cool. But, like, the monster's going to get my foot. So you it's going to be gonna, on the bed. It's going to lick your toes or something. <laughs> Ew, well, that might be worse. <laughs> For him. Ha <laughs> 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 ha. What, what do you say? Uh, one more and then we take an ad break? Yeah. Let's do it. Your All turn. Right. So this one's called Sorry. I have COVID, dude. <laughs> hey, can you read it in your voice? <laughs> Sorry, I have COVID, dude. <laughs> now, during the winter holiday season of 2021, so this is pretty recent, my partner and her son left the country to visit her father, so I was home alone with the cat and the dog. The entire day of the event was filled with strange occurrences. One example being... I walked past the front door on my way to the washroom. I looked at the door as I walked by and it just opens by itself. So I closed the door thinking to myself, well, how strange the timing was. I make sure it's securely closed by trying to open it without using the handle and it doesn't budge. Satisfied, I head to the washroom and do my thing. Number one or number two, not sure. <laughs> I don't wanna know. Walking back from the washroom to the rest of the house, I pass the front door. It's open. The fucking door has opened itself. And this time, the dog is barking at it. Mm -hmm. I tell him to relax, and usually he would. Not today. He did finally relax after a few minutes of ear bleed. Now fast forward two hours, around 6.30, 7 o'clock. And it's a nearly identical situation in that I walk past the front door, close it, test it, head to the bedroom, come back to the house, and it has opened again. Dog barking again, yada yada. Another two hours passes, it's nine o'clock, and I'm in bed when the dog starts in again. I immediately check the front door, and thankfully it's closed. This happens every two hours until around 4 a.m. Hmm. Now at 4 a.m., I'm woken by the barks accompanied by three hard knocks at the door. My blood is coursing, heart about to beat straight through my chest as I look through the window to the left of the door to see who's there. And there he is, a 10-ish year old indigenous boy standing there in a jacket, wholly unremarkable in appearance until I look for his eyes under his hood in the dark of, in the dark of night, completely black, from eyelid to eyelid, 
the conversation went roughly like this. Me. Door still closed, talking through the glass. What's up, little man? Him. I'm so cold. Can I come in? Me. Where are your parents? Him. He just stands there silent. He has this eerie, fake smile he's showing me while just kind of nodding. He evades the question and again talks about how cold he is. Me. Do you have parents, dude? It's 4am. What what the hell is going on? Are you okay? Where are your mom and dad? Him. He shrugs. I tell him. I can't let him in because I have COVID. I didn't end up getting it. I still wasn't convinced this wasn't a home invasion type scenario. I run to the bedroom, grab my cell phone, and dial 911. I give this dispatcher my name and address while walking back to the front door and start describing the kid. This takes maybe 15 seconds. When I get back to the front door, he's gone. I throw the door open and run out to the street, but he's gone. There's nowhere he could have gone that quickly. We live at the top of a cul-de-sac. That's basically it. I looked for neighbors with any cameras attached to their homes and asked if they had captured anything. Only two homes on my street have cameras and neither got anything. One of the homes with the camera is across the street from us and while she didn't capture any footage, she said she saw a kid walking the neighborhood a few days later in the early morning hours after, as she left for work. But when she got to where she saw him, he was gone. Mm, I don't like that one. <laughs> I do not like that one. That's a legit Black Eyed Kid story. Oh, ooh, that gave me goosebumps. I didn't. I didn't like that. That is a legit Black Eyed Kid story right there. That is. That's crazy, and it all started like with the door earlier in the day too. Yeah, like, that's weird. So, is it a paranormal thing? I don't know. Is it a shadow people thing? This is. It's very. These stories. This is nightmare fuel, man. Uh, it really is. Yeah. And. They don't get any better after this. Cool. So uh, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and take a, take an ad break, and we've got a few more stories for you right after a word from our unasked for sponsors. And now, Blue Crew, back to the creepy stories. <laughs> So far, what do you think of these stories? Um, I think I'm going to wait till the end to say how I feel. I think I've kind of led into that a little bit already, especially with that last one. I'm pretty excited to be able to do these on Patreon where I can freely speak. Yeah. Because I have a lot of gut reactions that I want to give that I just won't. And the F word that came out, that was part of the story. That is... Not something I just threw in there. But that it's a was a quoted story. That is part of the story yeah. that somebody wrote. So I'm sorry. I mean, I'm not sorry, but I'm sorry. <laughs> so I mean, it, every episode is listed as explicit. So you listen at your own at your own risk anyway. But not my words. But they probably will be when we do our Patreon show. Yes, because absolutely. I'm pretty sure we've said it before. We do have the mouths of sailors. We do. Uh, just not on here. You know, right. because we want it to be for everybody. But so far, these stories are creepy. They, they are, are creepy. These are the kinds of things you do not want to think about when it's dark out and you're like alone sitting in your living room or, mm. you know, like alone laying in bed. God on the forbid second, you get a knock on your door. On the second floor of a bedroom with double doors and the window just slightly cracked and, and you know, like a big open field in front of you with a mountain off to your right hand side. And, and one in behind front you. and behind yeah. you and to the left. And you oh, you mean the, the bedroom <laughs> that I have to go to bed alone in the tonight? Dark, the dark silhouette because I go of to bed the early. mountainscapes going on and oh. the wind, the wind whispering across. And you're like, what's that noise? What's that noise? That's okay. If I feel a little <laughs> creeped out, I'll just start making weird noises from upstairs and creep you out while you're downstairs gaming. I'll have a headset on. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already playing a game that's got creepy sounds in it. <laughs> but anyways, uh, let's get back into the stories because there's, there's, believe it or not, they get better or worse, depending on how you want to look at it. <laughs> but they get better or worse. <laughs> All right. Well, this one's called Late Night Snack. My great grandma. You're a late night snack. Oh, <laughs> sir. <laughs> 
Okay, marriage life. Go ahead. My great. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done one of those in a while, but okay. hey, we still like each other. All right. <sighs> My great grandma lived in a small town in New Mexico. She claims when she was younger, I'm assuming around her 30s, so this would be like 1950 to 1960. She was home at night getting a snack before bed when she heard someone knocking on her front door. She lives literally in the middle of the desert with hardly any neighbors. So when she went to answer the door, there was a child with their back turned towards her. They wanted to come in and asked her if she could give them something to eat. She refused and they turned around to show her their face with the blackest eyes. She thought it was a demon and closed and locked her front door. She claims to have heard knocking and banging on the door and the windows for hours until the sun came up. So now this now this takes the case for the oldest story. Because now we're talking 50s, 60s. Right. How come these weren't told before a 2000 and what was it, 12, 13? I don't know. It's really weird because that one guy started telling his story in what? Like 2012, right? Uh, Yes. From our episode last week? Yeah, 2012. Yeah. And I don't but, know. But, that, but, that's uh, when it's said to have like taken off. But su- Yes. That's when it came out and became popular. But su- mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure supposedly that occurrence happened in 94. Uh, well, still, this is way sooner. Yeah, well, yeah. But I'm just, that's what I'm saying. Like, how come this is all just becoming a thing now? Right. You know, very strange. Not the kind of thing you want to see living in the middle of the desert with nobody around. Um, Absolutely not. Grandma, don't want them snacks no more, I'm sure. <sighs> just go to bed. She is not hungry. <laughs> or don't go to bed. Just sit on the couch, I guess. 1950s, 60s, TV wasn't even on. <laughs> oh. You know, like, there was TV, obviously, but... There used to be, now, for all you kids out there who don't won't remember this, <laughs> there was actually a time at night where TV went off the air. Like, there was nothing on. Right. There was no, no channels, no, like, no you nothing just, played. That's where you see the bar, the colored bars. Yep. You know, so, believe it or not, TV did not run 24-7 back in the day. And you couldn't stream anything and everything you wanted to at any time. No, you couldn't stream anything. That's ever, right. Because there was no there was no internet. It was whatever was <laughs> boring on TV. That's you all you got. You are very much a millennial. You know what? <laughs> I'm an old millennial, thank you. <laughs> Not afraid to say it. Okay. <laughs> Elder emo. Uh-huh. The next right, story. Gen X. That's fine. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Which is pretty on brand for what they say people my age. The next story is called Two for the Price of One. So, first time, I used to go to work with my mom. I was around 14 or 15. We were driving home late, like always. Dark as all fuck outside, and it was raining something bad. Now there's a bridge my mom's convinced is a portal as strange shit always happens down there. So as mom's driving, out of nowhere, some farmer guy steps out of the woods and trees around the creek and the bridge is above and we have to swerve in order not to hit him. Thing is, he wasn't dressed for the rain. Hell, he wasn't even wet. He was a rather tall looking, farming looking white guy with brown messy hair, stubble, old used pants, boots, flannel shirt, and none of it getting wet. And when I looked into his eyes as we swerved, I felt nothing but complete, unfiltered fear and dread. He didn't even have whites inside his eyes. Everything was completely, uselessly black. Mom paused and asked if we should turn around and check if the guy's alright or needed a ride, and I told her I'd jump out of the car if she tried. (laughs) The second time, I'm currently visiting my dad, stepmom, and half-siblings, and there's a black-eyed kid outside. White kid in overalls, rainbow shirt, blonde hair with bangs, and just completely black eyes with zero pupils. Thing is, I genuinely feel zero fear nor dread around him like with the other one. Even though he's gotten inside, nothing has actually happened. 
To me, personally, it's just another spirit kid. He's even told me his name. Jason. Um, Jason? Go Voorhees. away. Jason Voorhees. Rain, rain, rain. Ch- 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 go, ah. go home, buddy. Like, good, bye. But this is another, like, this is the first time I've heard of a story where they get in. Right. But she feels no dread or fear. But the odd thing is, is that this is, how do I want to put this? We keep talking about what are they? Mm-hmm. Shadow people, whatever. But th- you remember from last week, they talked about, well, what if they are the child spirits of children? Right. And this is the first time we hear somebody not suggest it, but say that's what it is. And like super sure too. Like, yep, that's, it was there. Yeah. So mm. the next one's a good one because of where we are. <laughs> it's called the basement. <laughs> <sighs> Awesome. And it's about a little window in a basement. <laughs> in the basement. Stop. It's what it's about. Oh, my God. Why is it my turn right now? I don't know. Okay. The basement. I saw one when I was about 18 or 19, and my room was in the basement. There was a window, even with the ground right behind my bed. I woke up one night to go pee. As I was about to stand up off the edge of the bed, I looked up and saw a little girl there. She was really pale. Her clothes looked old, like from some old time movie. Eyes completely black with this empty stare, just looking right at me. It was like I couldn't move once we made eye contact. And then I fell back and passed out on my bed. It was pretty scary. I had no idea what it was at the time. I didn't delve into the world of cryptids until later on. I'm 31 now, for reference, but I still have never experienced anything like that. Do you hear that? Hello? Go check the window. Absolutely not. (laughs) Give me the mouse. (laughs) That window's already creepy. No, thank you. Dude, I never move the curtains in that window. No. I don't like to come down here at night either. It's like one of those, what do they call it? Like the the window well? Yeah, it's a window well. A window well? Mm-hmm. But like the, the window looks like up inside it. I don't know. I've never lived anywhere with a basement. Well, it, it is a weird, weird. It is a weird window for a basement because, you know, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned on here before, I come from the Northeast. And basement windows aren't usually windows. They're, I mean, they're windows, but they're usually like these little rectangular windows that are just above the ground. So they're like high up on the wall. This thing's like a regular window. It is, but it's like down in this creepy That's what like, I mean. thing with a ladder. And I don't know. Yeah. It's weird. It is a very weird window. And, but they all have them here. I know. So I guess that's the normal thing here. It's very odd uh, because this is not what I'm used to. The only basement windows I've ever seen or the ones like in the story where it's just like a little sliver even with the ground. Yeah, we record in the basement, but neither of us really like it very much down here. <laughs> no, and this is where all my music stuff gets shoved. Yeah. This is supposed to be my hangout area. I'm not down. <laughs> it's where we record because we have the majority of the room. So. Now, the next story is called I'm a Skeptic, Usually. Uh Uh-oh. I'm definitely a skeptic on topics such as this, and I tend to take many stories like this with a grain of salt. Although skeptical by nature, I also never ignore the unknown as well. Let's just be honest. There are so many things about our realm of existence and our universe that we indeed know nothing about. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not a religious person, nor am I an atheist, so I always take into the account the unknown while staying tempered and grounded by healthy skepticism. I do have a BEK story, albeit one that I did not experience firsthand. It happened last year in October 2017. I have custody of both my children, my son 11 and my daughter 7. They live with my girlfriend and I. Very good grammar. (laughs) My girlfriend was taking my daughter to school that morning, and it was around 7.30 a.m. 
They were about a quarter of a mile from the school when my girlfriend noticed a little girl standing in front of a house right in the street in the neighborhood that they were passing through. Now, the little girl was standing on the left-hand side of the street, so my girlfriend got a very good look at her, and they were only going about 25, 30 miles per hour. The little girl, according to my girlfriend, had the longest, straightest, and most beautiful head of jet black hair that she had ever seen. She was wearing a dress that came down just below the knee, with the oddest and brightest pattern of color she's ever seen. At first, she thought it was a mannequin because of her motionless and unusual posture. As she was passing the little girl, the little girl just slightly tilted and turned her head simultaneously with the motion of the car. Nope. That was when she noticed the eyes. And yes, they did make eye contact with one another. My girlfriend described the eyes as blacker than night and bottomless pits. The little girl smiled, but only slightly. My girlfriend said that an irrational terror just consumed her upon eye contact with this little girl, who appeared to be about six years old. As she traveled about a hundred yards further, then looked into the rearview mirror, the little girl was gone. She said that my daughter said to her, "The the weird girl scared me. My girlfriend was absolutely unnerved after this and was almost a basket case for the next two days. My girlfriend is a very rational and logical person, but this encounter rattled her to the very fabric of her soul. Now, it did scare my daughter as well, but she never said anything about it. My girlfriend has never been one to throw bullshit around, and like myself, she has a very low tolerance for bullshit. She had an encounter with something that cannot be explained on any logical level. Chalk up another one for the unknown. Mm. Mm-mm. Dude, that one's... I did not I did this not is, like that. And, and this one isn't in the middle of the night, like, normal. Right? This, it's in the morning. This is in the morning on, like, on their way to school. Like, bruh, bruh. No. Crazy, man. Crazy. No, no, and no. And it just, like, consumed them with fear. <sighs> Absolutely not. And... And, like, the head tilt. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. The thing that really got me with that story is that's the second story now that we've talked about somebody describing them as black-eyed kids with a colorful attire. Right. So everything on the outside is super bright, appealing, like... Childlike. Eye-catching. I don't don't know. Very childlike. Yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe we're learning some things today. Maybe there's more to this than we think. But I th- let's get the next one. I think there's only like two more. Okay. And, and there, uh, the last one oh is boy. a good one. Oh, boy. All right. So this one's called You Must Let Me In. On March 17th, 2008, I had my one and only encounter with a black-eyed kid. Before my experience... I had never heard of anything having to do with the black-eyed kids. I was 12. I was sitting outside of a hairdresser in an old Chevy pickup waiting for my mom to get her hair cut. As most of us did as kids in the 80s. About 15 minutes had passed and I saw some kid walking back and forth along the sidewalk in front of my parked car. At first... I thought I recognized him as one of my friends from school, so I banged on the front windshield until he looked my way. It was not anyone I knew, and at this point, I was not scared at all. Not yet. The boy walked over to the side of my car and just stares. I think to let me get a good look at his eyes, to freak me out. Let me tell you, If you have never seen a black-eyed kid, you have no idea what to imagine. Pupils black as the night sky. The boy whispers, You must let me in. And then I lock the car doors and duck down into the space below the seats. Five minutes later, he was gone. When my mother got into the car, she told me, 
a boy with black eyes, had come into the hairdresser's and had insisted for my mother to give him the keys to the car. She refused. Thank God she did. Let me in. Mm-mm, absolutely not, sir. Let me in. No. Uh-uh. Yeah, screw that. You're like 12 sitting in a car, and I somebody's mean, like, let me in. Ew, yeah, go guess, away. At least the other kids around your age. <gasps> oh. At least, I don't know. No. But another account from before the original accounts of the Black Eyed Kids. Mm-hmm. So why have has this not been a thing? Right. Until now. How many is this now? Like four? Five? Yeah, at least, yeah. That's a lot crazy. of these, I think, take place before the original story. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say like 2010 for benefit of the doubt, but I'm pretty sure it was 2012 when it all started on no, the it was, internet. it was 2012. That guy... With that guy's article. I'm going to say very confidently it was 2012. Okay. I don't know. But, so many of these are before then. But the actual Black Eyed Kids phenomena didn't take off until 2013. Because mm. then, you know, people had to read it first and everything. Of course. You know, this is the last story. And it's called Trick or Treat. Oh. And and what a good one to end on, right? It's right. Halloween, Black Eyed Kids. Ugh. Here we go. Okay. This really freaked me out. Yesterday I noticed my neighbor hadn't put out all his Halloween decorations, lights, etc. The past two years I've lived next to him, he's gone all out for Halloween. Now, I don't know him well. He's younger, single, but I know he likes kids, not in a creepy way. His brother and sister-in-law and their kids are always visiting him, and he plays with his three young nieces and nephews out in the yard. So anyway... I got home from work and was walking up my driveway and I saw him outside and said something like, Hey man, you better go get your Halloween stuff up or that house down the street's going to beat you for best decorations. He kind of smiles sheepishly and says that he's actually going to keep his house dark this year and just put candy out. I asked if he was going out of town, but he said no. Something happened last year that really scared him. Now I was concerned for my own safety. If some weirdos were coming around our neighborhood, which is a pretty safe neighborhood with tons of young families living here. So I asked him what happened. He said last year he had his brother's family over so they could trick or treat in the neighborhood since they live in an apartment complex that doesn't do much for Halloween. They had a bunch of kids come by the door like always. His family took off around 1030 and there were only a few older trick or treaters, but By 11.30, they were pretty much done. So, he was inside, watching TV, and the doorbell rings. He grabs the candy bowl and heads over, noticing that it's a little past midnight, and that's pretty rude for trick-or-treaters to still be out. But then he notices he hasn't turned off all his lights or decorations, so his house is still a beacon. He swings the door open and is about to yell, Boo! Or something to freak him out, but stops dead when he sees the kids at the door. He said one was probably around 13 or 14, and the other around 16 or 17, both boys. They weren't dressed up, but he remembers the older one was wearing a flannel checkered shirt. He was immediately overcome with uneasiness, like opening the door was a huge mistake. They just stared at him, and he noticed they had really big irises and dilated pupils. He couldn't even see the whites of their eyes, so he figured they were contact lenses. He was frozen there, holding the candy bowl, like he couldn't slam the door in their face as much as he wanted to. So, he nervously tried to smile at them, hoping they would break character and ask for candy or something. The younger one said they had gotten lost and needed to come in and use his phone. That was when he closed the door more than halfway on them and said, No, sorry. And the older one said something like, Can we just wait in your house until our parents come get us? But by then, he was convinced that his life was in danger, and these kids must be high on something or intending to rob him. And he just kept mumbling, No, sorry, good night, as he inched the door closed and locked it. He told me he was so fucking scared at the point that they were going to try and break in through one of his windows or something, but... He looked through the peephole and they had turned to leave. He watched TV with the volume really low so he could hear any sounds at all 
and he said he stayed up till like 5 a.m. because he was so scared to go to bed and drop his guard. Now, the whole time he's telling me this, I'm thinking, oh my God, this sounds so familiar. Just like the Black Eyed Kids urban legend. Then I thought, hey, maybe this dude's trying to scare me because, after all, he does have the Halloween spirit. So I'm looking at him incredulously, but trying not to seem too gullible. So I'm like, man, that's crazy. Sounds like black eyed kids. He just looks at me blankly. The what? Is that a movie or something? I said, no, but then told him to go look it up online. Like an hour later, I get a knock on my door and admittedly almost jumped out of my skin thinking it's a demon child. <laughs> now, it was my neighbor and his eyes were freaking huge. He swears to me up and down that he had never heard of the BEKs before, and it's so similar to what happened to him. So we talked a while longer, and I told him that quite a few people probably know about that urban legend, and it's possible it was just teenagers with black scleral contacts trying to freak people out on Halloween, which would be genius, by the way. Mm -hmm. But he said the fear that he felt was so primal and came over him the second He opened the door for them. (sighs) Happy Uh, Halloween. (laughs) No way, dude. Absolutely not. On Halloween night, get out of here. Dude. Nope. But honestly, how come nobody has done that? Right? That is a really good idea. It would freak a lot of people out because, you know, I think enough people know what they are now. Like, they've even been in newspapers and stuff, so. (sighs) No. I don't know. But that's the last of the story. There's more stories out there. I so many I just more, pulled sure. the first ones I could find. Um because I figured, you know, they would be the most relevant to but I did have to sift through them a little bit because again, there were a lot of stories that weren't really black eyed kids. It was just black eyed people or mm-hmm. like demon possession or what All kinds of things thrown yeah. into one. <laughs> yeah. But now that we've gotten through part two of the black eyed kids. I have to ask you, Megan. Is it real? Is it real? Do you think it is real? Yes. You do? I do. I do. I don't know what it is. I don't know why it is, where it happens, how it happens, any of those things. But I could definitely see something like this just happening. I mean, I think enough people have stories like personal stories about it and they all have like this concurrent the 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 feelings the the way it happens they ask to come in like it it's such a trend moving through all of these stories that i i have to say that yes like i do okay so what about you i'm going to say no okay um but that's only it's all, it's not it's not a real no. It's only because I believe the answer is way more multifaceted than just yes or no. Because I think that there is a connection that can be drawn to other things that would ne- not necessarily make them black-eyed kids, but I believe for as many people on Reddit that were trying to convince everybody that they were telling the wrong story by t- telling these stories about people with their eyes turning black. Mhm. I think they're wrong. I think there's more of a parallel there than anybody thinks. I think whatever that is, it's what's happening here. Because okay. I believe it. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's demonic. or I don't know what it is. But it, maybe there is something that is taking over people in a way. Because they say that that sometimes like crazy people, like their eyes change. Right. They look different. You know, your pupils do dilate and things like that. So mm-hmm. maybe there's like some other connection to this where it's like a, oh, I wish I could remember the French term, but it's like when a group of people lose their mind at the same time. Mm-hmm. And this is why maybe you have a couple kids or just one kid or maybe a guy at the mall that's staring at your family or, Ugh. you know, the kids on the bus that you've seen every day. So... So I'm weird. only going to say no because of that, because I actually think there's more to it than just the black eyed kids. I don't think it's the black eyed kids in general. I think the black eyes are the real story. Mm, okay. So 
I'm not going to give it the the skadoosh skadoosh be- only because like I'm too far. I don't under I don't have an, enough of an understanding. But what I do know is this: is that of all the topics we've talked about, this is the one that I legitimately fear. Got, yeah, this literally gave me creeps. Yeah, I mean it's a creepy subject, especially children like when we did that episode of imaginary friends and children oh that was a creepy one for it us. it was absolutely you know because we have well we also had our own encounter with that yeah so like i don't know there's i just think there's more i think there's more to this and i, I actually I agree. think as as we keep doing this show i bet we'll hit a topic eventually where we're going to draw back something to this and be like oh my gosh this sounds very familiar can i start Connecting the dots, maybe? Maybe. Maybe we should put up the pegboard with, you know, like the, the yarn going everywhere. <gasps> like we used to do when we played uh, Hunt the Killer? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, I, you know, that's it. So that's where we're at. We're kind of like a yes and a no. Yeah. Uh, we're like dead in the middle with this one. So I feel like there's something there for sure. There is something. <clears throat> there is oh something goodness. there. What is going on with my throat? I don't know. <clears throat> do you want me to punch it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Brian? That's, but I just I just don't think this is the last time we'll end up talking about this, whether we realize it or not. I I don't know. I there's too much here. There's too much here. And if you like this format of, and this is new for us, so like it's going to get better. But this is what we're going to be doing over on Patreon. Yeah, and this is just us kind of hanging out together yep. and reading stories we're gonna be and pulling, talking to you guys, pulling people's paranormal encounters from off the internet and talking about them in the new show behind the booze. Yay. That's right. We even got some creepy little music for the show and everything. Yeah, already. you finished that up the other day, Good. didn't you? Yeah, I'm busy bee. Uh. But uh, <laughs> I guess this is it. Where can they find us? They can find us on Instagram at for the booze underscore podcast and on Facebook at for the booze. You can also find us on X Twitter at for the booze. You can find us on YouTube at for the booze. I'm telling you guys, we will do videos eventually. We just gotta just gotta figure it out. Figure, figure out how to get the computer to work right with. I've got to figure out how to use OBS. Again, if anybody out there knows how, please hit me up. Please. Um, also, Patreon. If you'd Yay. like to help support the show, hit us up on Patreon at For the Booze. And, you know, any any little bit helps. And anybody, one one th- one and up. It doesn't matter how much you donate. You'll you'll get the show. The uh, You'll get the Behind the Booze show. Behind the Booze. You Behind get early booze. release of our episodes. Only five and up. <laughs> you can tell Megan doesn't run this stuff. <laughs> I don't. I'm just here. But we will do we will do the extra podcast for anybody who helps support the show. Absolutely. Anybody. So that and don't forget if you have any listener stories or suggestions, send them to for the booze 12 gmo.com. That is for the booze 12 gmo.com. For the booze 12 gmo.com. At gmail.com in case you didn't catch that. Yes, for the booze 12 gmo.com. <laughs> and one last thing. Five stars. Rate and review. Five stars. Rate and review. Five stars. Rate and review. Hip, hip, hooray. <laughs> we need them, guys. And we've gotten some here and there. <laughs> and it's been awesome. And obviously, shout out to our our Patreons. You Absolutely. Know, our, you guys really make help. We Honestly, it's the only revenue that we honestly have coming into the show right it now. It is. 100%. So even the little bit. It really makes it worth doing. It, it does. really does because you know we know we're doing it for, for some people. And we look we look forward to sitting down and making these new episodes and you know just doing these little almost like hangout sessions. I yeah, guess you could fun. call them. So there's no like huge stories behind I them. Mean, I, I look forward to sitting down to record them all. I just don't like sitting down to edit them all. Right, <laughs> editing <laughs> and all the research <laughs> that goes into oh, yeah. all of our episodes. So yeah, I got to look up so much stuff. It's it's frustrating. But anyways, <laughs> you know I'm gonna keep doing it because I love the show. We do. But I I guess that's it. That is that's it. Good. Well, thank you everybody so much for listening, and we will see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I bet you'll keep your toes under your blanket tonight.